This is NIU Weekly. Welcome to another edition of our show here where we talk all things Huskies athletics. I'm Terry Bonadonna, your host once again today. Excited to get prepared for game number eight of the NIU football season. The football team will be heading to Muncie, Indiana this week to take on Ball State in the battle for the bronze stalk. So that's always a good game. There's a lot of other sports going on at NIU right now as well. Basketball is getting underway later this week. The women's team is going to host an exhibition game this weekend. And the wrestling season is just about set to get underway as well. And with that in mind, we will be talking with wrestling head coach Ryan Ludwig a little bit later on the show. And he's going to break down the roster and the upcoming schedule as we get set now, just days away from the start of the NIU wrestling season. Basketball, of course, as I mentioned, is getting started as well. The women have that exhibition game this weekend. And with basketball season now getting started, I want to remind you that there is still time to get your basketball tickets. Men's season tickets start at $105 for general admission seats. You can also get a reserved seat for $120, just $15 more. Women's basketball season tickets are $35 for general admission. And again, at 15, $50 for the reserve tickets in great locations. Basketball season is right around the corner. So it's time to stop stalling. Get those season tickets right away. Discounts are available for NIU faculty and staff. NIU Alumni Association, senior citizens and varsity club members all get discounted tickets. Go to NIUHuskies.com slash tickets or call 815-753-PAC. It's 815-753-7225. You can get your basketball tickets today. We're going to welcome in our first guest on NAU Weekly in just a moment. But first, we are still in the middle of the week of giving. So there's still time for you to donate to Huskies Invest. The goal this year is $1 million. We're looking for 1,250 gifts. And you can still donate. Go to NIUHuskies.com slash Huskies Invest 24. You can send your donation there or... Uh, you can also get more information on where that donation is going to go and how to go about doing it. Again, that's NIUHuskies.com slash Huskies Invest 24. All right. I think we're ready to get rolling and welcome in our guests for today. So let's get the show started with our first guest. As always, we welcome in the head coach of the Huskies football team, Thomas Hammock. Coach, a pleasure as always to have you on NIU Weekly. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Good. Uh, let's talk about the last game a little bit before we move on to next week. Toledo, 13-6 uh, to six win over NIU this past Saturday. Obviously, you give up 13 points, another great performance by the defense. And I know we talk about the defense every week, but I do want to go through some of the numbers because they're pretty impressive. Uh, Toledo went 2 of 15 on third downs, which has become kind of standard. You forced eight punts, one turnover on downs. Uh, you, you held them to the one big play, the touchdown, and other than that, just a couple of field goals. What are your overall impressions now that we're a little bit over halfway through the season on this defense? No, our defense has been playing outstanding. Um, you know, our players are playing really well. Uh, the coaches are doing a good job, you know, uh, implementing the schemes. And they're going out there and executing at a very high level. And I think that gives us, you know, great uh, confidence in that phase. Um, it, it's been exciting to see. It's been exciting to see the growth and development uh, of the guys on that side of the ball. And that's something that we need to continue to uh, – you know, do over the second half of the season. Yeah, you make a good point about the growth and development. This defense was playing well, really, from week one. But guys certainly individually have improved since the beginning of the season. Are there any players that have stood out to you for either improving at an incredible level or being maybe a little bit better than you expected? Well, I would have to say, you know, Jelani Williams is a young man um, that, you know, I told my staff to to move to defensive end. Uh, there was some pushback or, or, or whether he can do it or not. And obviously he's proved that he can be a force uh, at the defensive end position. Uh, Skylar Gill Howard continues to get better. Uh, I think people forget, you know, he's a he's number two on the depth chart, um, but he's playing like a starter uh, and a guy that, you know, obviously, you know, we want back next season and, and elevate his role even more so. Like the way a young guy like Santana Banner is playing, uh, he gives us a an edge uh, at the safety position. And I think our corners are playing extremely well. So uh, there's a our whole defense is playing well. But if you wanted me to single out a couple guys that are probably playing, you know, better than we anticipated, uh, those those group of guys uh, will be in that conversation with Nabe Sanders as well. I think in the age of the transfer portal, it's sometimes a little bit more difficult to get a team to buy in. A lot of guys, I think, sometimes play individually, knowing they, there could be big money down the road for them. 
you really got the team to buy in to this defense. I mean, third in the nation in, in total yards allowed, eighth in scoring defense, and it has been a team effort. How do you get that level of buy in from guys? Yeah, no, if you don't buy into our program and our culture, uh, you're not going to play here. And that that's just, you know, how we're going to operate. I think we are different. We are unique in our ability to build relationships with players. Uh, they know we love them. They know we care about them. And we, we will do anything to help them uh, be successful, not only in football, but in life. Uh, and I think our players understand that. And that's why they go out there and play uh, the way that they play, because obviously it's a two-way street uh, with that. So, um, we're going to continue to build our program in that regard uh, and, and be different. We're going to be the outlier in college football where you can love your players and care about them and have great relationships uh, and all those external things become less of a factor. Let's flip over to the offensive side of the ball. Josh Holst, redshirt freshman quarterback, made his first career start against Toledo. What did you think of his performance? Well, I mean, I think obviously, you know, you make your first start. There's a lot of things that you can do better. Uh, you know, there was a lot of situations that he was in for the first time. But I thought he handled himself well. I thought he operated the offense well. There was a lot of things that we can do better. Uh, and that's what I showed our football team on tape. You know, if, if we are more precise in what we're doing and what we uh, – and how to execute the plays, there are, there is a lot more offense uh, that's available to us. Some of that offense started to to work its way back into the fold this past week. You had a couple of injured players come back. Trayvon Rudolph made five catches. And to, Ontario Brown had 13 carries. So, uh, I mean, they may not have been at 100% strength just yet. But, you know, you've either got a young quarterback, Josh Holst, who's just kind of working his way into starting. Or, you know, eventually Ethan Hampton maybe comes back from his injury. And he's trying to get back into the swing of things. But either way... How important is it to have some of these other skill position guys getting back and getting close to full strength? Well, it's good to have those guys back. You know, they they practiced in a limited capacity last week. And so, you know, we were trying to ease them back into the flow of the game. But, you know, this week they are full go. And I think that gives us a lot more weapons available uh, down the second half of the season uh, to get our offense on track and to be the type of offense that we want to be. Yeah, I mean, let's look ahead a little bit. You got Ball State coming up this week and then a little bit of time off as you move into to action and some midweek games. But as you try to develop that offense, you know, you have had a lot of injuries on offense. There's been some adversity on the offensive side. What are you working on right now to get better and 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 make sure that this offense is hitting on all cylinders when we come down the stretch? Well, we're just trying to be more precise. Um, what we ask the guys to do, can they handle it mentally and physically? And then obviously we have to, build our schemes uh, around the players uh, and then sequence plays. I think that's going to be a big thing for us. How do we want to play the game uh, from a situational standpoint? What are the best things that give us the most advantages? Uh, and if we can get all those things uh, in order, uh, I think we have a chance to be very, very dynamic over the second half of the season. When you look at a game like last week, 391 total yards, you, had, you ran almost 100 plays in the game. You really controlled the clock just weren't really able to get into the red zone and you weren't able to get in the end zone in that game. But obviously some of those numbers I just mentioned, there are some positives to take away. How do you, when you're addressing the team, take those positives and try to spur them on to, to take that next step? Well, I, I, when I showed the tape uh, on Monday, um, I showed them the possibilities if we do our job on each and every single play. And I think that that makes it clear and obvious, you know, how much better we can get. And what I saw this morning was a motivated offense, uh, an offense that knows they can be good. Now they have to go out there and execute uh, to the standard that we expect so we can go out there and operate. You had to Muncie this week, taking on Ball State for the Bronze Stock Trophy. Uh, when you look at that trophy, is that something that you talk about at all with the players? No, we certainly talk about it. And uh, obviously, you know, we haven't done a good job bringing it back to the cow. Um, and so we, we got a lot of work to do. Uh, this is a team that's, you know, played us really, really well since I've been here. And we got to figure out a way how to finish games, uh, you know, when we play them. Let's uh, let's scout ball state a little bit. What do you expect from this game? Well, you know what they're going to do offensively. Um, they got the whole array of plays and uh, screens and draws and uh, reverses, reverse pass, wildcat. They have it all. So uh, we have to have great eye discipline uh, throughout the week. Uh, and on Saturday, uh, know who's got the ball. They got a quarterback that uh, can operate their offense at a high level. And, uh, you know, we have to tackle well. They got some running backs that run downhill. 
And then defensively, uh, they, are, they are getting better each and every single week on defense. And, uh, you know, they're playing hard, playing together. Uh, and so we have to be uh, have great execution on offense to be able to move the ball the way we want to move the ball. And then special teams, again, uh, they got some guys on special teams that can make plays. Uh, and we got to know who those guys are and, and try to neutralize them as best as possible. It should be a good game against Ball State on Saturday. I know we're all looking forward to it. Looking forward to hopefully seeing that Bronze Stock Trophy come back to DeKalb. Coach Thomas Hammock, thank you as always for your time this week, and we're looking forward to the game this weekend. Appreciate it, and go Huskies. Our next guest on NIU Weekly, a longtime member of the Husky family, Ryan Ludwig, now in his 14th season as head coach of the wrestling team at NIU. Spent some time here as an assistant before that. So Ryan's been with the program for many years. I'm very excited that we are getting this wrestling season underway coming up over the next couple of weeks. Ryan Ludwig, welcome to NIU Weekly. Hey, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. And like you said, um, time has gone very fast. I remember interviewing with Coach Grant for my assistant role. And next thing I knew, I woke up. It was 20 years later. And, and here we are. So um things have been great though things have advanced really well so um it's a great time to be a husky and i'm sure time went pretty quickly this off season as well it always shocks me when i look up and realize oh winter sports are starting already you've got the red black inter-squad meet coming up this weekend uh, at the niu convocation center tell us a little bit about that yeah it's incredible that it's already here um this is a, a great chance to showcase our team in front of the school in front of the wrestling community and really give everyone a chance to see who we've got in our room and how how well these guys compete against each other. Um, what we're looking for is match preparation. Um, you know, there can be a tendency for guys to wrestle a little tight, you know, with, with teammates, um, guys that they feel like may know, you know, their particular techniques or strategies. But our message to our guys really is, you know, yes, we, we – Wins and losses matter in this regard, but more importantly, what we're looking for is our pre-match routine. How do we handle our making weight? Um, what are we putting in our bodies after weigh-ins? And then are we going to go out there with the mindset to to get after it and get our offense flowing and, and let things fly and try to put points on the board instead of wrestle too conservatively? And for fans, this is a big event on Friday night as well because you're not wrestling at home uh, during your regular season for almost a month, not until late November. Uh, and you don't have a ton of home matches this year. So this is a big opportunity for the fans to come out and see the 2024-25 Huskies wrestling team. Yeah, that's correct. So um, this is one of four chances to see us compete at home, and, and it is against each other. But the nice thing is you can see twice the Huskies wrestle <laughs> you know, in this event. But, uh, yeah, it seems to be lopsided. So every other year we're home dual heavy, and then the other year we're, we're a little bit more away. But um, I think Friday night, actually tomorrow, we wrestle the prelims in the room. So really, it's it's a cool deal because all the young guys, we've got 11 freshmen, um, all very talented, very motivated young, me, young men. And then we've got five transfers as well. So um, a lot of different flavor, a lot of different variety of techniques and abilities in the room. So it's going to be great to see how they all match up in the prelims and ultimately who our two guys are that surface for that finals event on Friday evening. You're coming off of a very successful season last year. You won a Mac West championship undefeated at home last year. How do you carry that success over from year to year? Yeah, that was incredible. Um, we celebrated that. We actually culminated that um, with giving some commemorative watches to our team at our fundraising event a few weeks ago. So that was an incredible year. Um, the guys really came together as a dual meet squad and had a lot of success. So that being said, actually, um, I took down a lot of the material from right outside the locker room just yesterday and said, guys, it's time, time for new material, you know? So while that's nice and we celebrate that and the guys laid a great foundation moving forward with expectations and the way we do things, um, a year older doesn't necessarily mean a year better. So we have to earn it every day. And ultimately what we're trying to do, and it's a bit of cliche, but I don't think it's any, you know, I don't think it could get any more true than the fact that you just need to be better today than you were yesterday. So we're getting in better shape. We're getting better wrestling. Um, our mat strategy is getting better every day. And that's ultimately our goal so that we can prepare to do our best at the Michigan State Open on November 9th. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of guys in that locker room right now who weren't even here last year. You already mentioned 11 freshmen, five transfers. Before we talk about that, though, you do have some big returning wrestlers from a year ago as well. Who are some of the, the guys we should be looking out for this year who are back from a season ago? Yeah, I mean, some guys to watch. I mean, outside of a ton of new talent and things like that, I mean, I'll just go through through the weight classes here. So at 125, 
has been our steadfast leader and captain Blake West. Um, so he he's a returning NCAA qualifier and MAC runner up. He's had a lot of success for the success over the years. He's a leader in academics and um, in character on the team. So we're expecting you know a lot of action from him. He's had a great preseason. He really never put it down in the spring and in the summertime. He's put in a lot of hours. So Blake's going to kind of lead the way at 125. Um, at 133, I think it's an exciting competition here with returner Lucian Brink, who's had a really strong campaign. This is his senior year. And then we've got an, a guy who's new to our program uh, named Markel Baker. So he transferred to us, had a lot of success in the state of Illinois on the prep level. And um, he's a really interesting guy, too. So I think that's going to be a really highly contested match on Friday night. So that'll be fun. Uh, 141, we've got returner Jacob Bry, who was a returning Mac runner up and national qualifier. So he's a dynamic performer as well. And he's only a sophomore. So I think he's the one that's going to be a lot of fun to watch at 149. We see Colin Arch emerging early at that weight class. He is a four time state champ from Missouri. He's had a lot of success at the prep level. And I think his preparation has been amazing over the spring and summer as well. Um, I think at 157, you know, some guys to keep an eye on are local product Brody Hallen and then transfer Landon Johnson. So I think those guys have kind of styles that don't necessarily mix. Uh, Landon's a very tall guy and kind of got funky hips on him. And Brody's, uh, you know, solid, strong, super moving forward guy. So I think that'll be an interesting mix matchup. At 165, we've got a returning guy in Tommy Bennett, who had some flashes of greatness last year for us won some big matches, and then a very talented redshirt freshman named Brett Smith from Missouri. So that's going to be a lot of fireworks there as well. At 174, um, we've got a seasoned veteran named Jake Evans, who's really kind of looking to get into a, a consistent starting role, but very capable, very tough on top. So we, we're looking to see what he's capable of at that weight class. And then at 184, we think we're going to have some con contested, um, a contested match from guys named Spencer Steiner, who's a transfer to us, and then a freshman named Dominic Heim. So a couple of guys that are new to the program, but very hardworking individuals, and they're hungry for seed time in the lineup. And then at 197, we've got a returner named Sean Carroll, who had some really good matches for us last year, really started to figure things out towards the end of the year. So we asked a lot of him last year and starting as a true freshman, especially at that weight class, and he's really developed over the spring and summer. And then a really dynamic transfer named Spencer Mooberry, who, who's had a lot of success at the national level. So that's going to be an interesting matchup. And then at heavyweight, um, we've had a nationally ranked heavyweight named Jacoby Jackson. He was a dynamic performer. If you watch any home duels last year, you saw a lot of him um, and some great performances. And then he'll be challenged by Jacob Christensen. So um, on top of that, you know, I, I hate not even naming everyone because everyone in there is capable of very big things. And that's kind of what this process is about all week long here. The chance for guys to suit up and prove that they want to be the number one guy. And um Regardless of how these matches play out this week, we will still continue to evaluate and, and watch all these high-level competitions that these guys compete in together throughout the first semester so we can really solidify our lineup heading into the second semester. Let me single out a couple of the guys that you mentioned in there. Blake West, Jacob Bry, you mentioned are national qualifiers from a year ago. I think mm -hmm. a lot of fans like me look at that and think, okay, you're this good this year. You're going to be this much better next year, and you're going to be this much better the year after that. And it's not always a linear progression like that. When you're coming off of a year where you've had that much success, how do you stay focused and get to the next level the next year? I think the great thing about getting to the national tournament is now, now you have that experience, right? You've tasted what it's like to be there. You see – the level of competition that it takes to get on the stand at the national tournament. You see the razor fine margins that separate the national champion from the guy that's the round of 12 and just left off the podium. So everyone at that tournament is incredibly, incredibly skilled and hardworking and dedicated. So I think what it really does is just kind of wet your whistle and, and motivate you even more to, to have that solid spring and that solid summer to put that extra work in to take yourself to the next level. Um, and with people coming off red shirts that are coming into this year, I mean, the landscape is ever changing guys bumping up weight classes. So it's always brand new every year. But, um, I can tell you one thing's for sure. Those guys have put in the time and the effort to, to make those advances, but, uh, now we got to put it out there, you know, and, and really just continue to train so that we can put our best out there on competition day. You mentioned right when we started this interview that the red and black inter squad on Friday is one of only four chances that NIU fans are going to get a chance to see the, this team at home this year. So you only have the three regular season duels 
at the convocation center, which makes to me each one that much more precious, that much more valuable. How big is it for the team to have their home fans, to have that that home arena to to work in? I think it's a huge deal for us. Last year, we had a lot of steam at our home duels. Like you said, I mean, we had a fantastic home dual meet record um, to go undefeated at home was something incredibly special. And uh, I think a lot of that was provided by the juice and the fans that came out to see us. And and that built steam, you know, through over the years, they wanted to come see us wrestle. So we've got an exciting product. Our guys wrestle hard. Um, our home duels are very intriguing. So we've got Ryder in late November. Um, Traditional Mac Power, they're from New Jersey. They've got some really talented wrestlers. I think that's going to be a knockdown, drag them out duel. We had a one point duel meet with them last year at their house. So, I mean, that's going to that's be a heated battle. So, that'll be a lot of fun. And then after the first or after the second semester starts, we've got Purdue at home. So, that's huge. Um, they're always tough and a Big Ten opponent coming into our home. So, that'll be a lot of, a lot of fun for the fans. And then we finish with our always entertaining Beauty and the Beast matchup on February 7th. And we're, we're hosting Buffalo. So, that is always an exciting match between us and Buffalo. They, they like to wrestle a really physical style and we, we both go at it. So I think um, that day, whether you know wrestling or whether you know gymnastics or not, come on out and see it because there is something to watch at all times. It's a great day. I want to hit on some important dates before we sign off here. This Friday, October 25th, is the Red Black. November 9th, you are at Michigan State opening up the regular season. And November 22nd is the official home opener against Ryder. Am I missing anything? Nope. I think, uh, I think you're hitting it right there. I mean, we'll be at Northwestern in between Michigan state and the Ryder at home. So again, you know, i um, kind of battling back and forth that we got the best of them at home last year. I'm sure they're, they're looking for another chance at that this year. And I think they've got a really loaded up squad. So there's going to be some crazy individual matchups there between nationally ranked opponents. So that's only an hour away in Evanston. If you want to support your Huskies, that's pretty easy to do as well. Well, Ryan Ludwig, the longtime head coach of the NIU wrestling team. I think you've done a good enough job getting everybody psyched up for the start of wrestling season. I hope so. The corner. Uh, thank you for joining me on NIU Weekly. Thanks for having me. Thanks once again to our guests today, Thomas Hammock, the football coach, and Ryan Ludwig, the wrestling coach here on NIU Weekly. That conversation with Ryan Ludwig really hammered home the point that we are now entering that fabled time of year, the crossover season, the joy to all of the fans uh, and the nightmare to all of the athletics administrators who have to deal with both fall sports and winter sports going on at the same time. But it is becoming a very busy time to be a sports fan around college athletics and especially right here at NIU as the volleyball team is home this weekend. They'll take on Ball State Friday and Saturday. So while the football team heads out to Indiana, Ball State's volleyball team comes the other way. Back-to-back -back matches at Victory Court. So that should be a fun weekend for volleyball fans in DeKalb this week. It's also senior day on Sunday for the NIU women's soccer team. Uh, they'll be playing on Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock, and that is against Toledo uh, on the soccer field. Obviously a home match um, for senior day. But uh, if you really want to look at the best matchup all weekend, it's men's golf. They win the prize for best road trip. Nothing against Muncie, Indiana or Kalamazoo, Michigan. Uh, but when you're going to a place called Paradise Island, I think you you take that prize. They're participating in the White Sands Collegiate Tournament Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and that is in the Bahamas. Also in action this week, the MAC Indoor Championships for both men's and women's tennis are this weekend. Men's soccer is on the road at Belmont on Friday, 6.30 start time. Uh, that one is in Nashville, Tennessee. Wrestling has the Red Black Meet the Intra Squad matchup on Friday night. That's a seven o'clock at the Convocation Center. Uh, and basketball is getting set to get underway as well. Women's basketball hosts Benedictine. That is at one o'clock on Sunday afternoon. That is officially an exhibition game, but it is the start of basketball season here at NIU. So that's very exciting. Of course, we know that football as well is in action. That's a 2.30 start time on Saturday at Ball State in Muncie, Indiana. That's going to do it for today's episode of NIU Weekly. Thanks one final time to NIU football coach Thomas Hammock and wrestling coach Ryan Ludwig. Great to talk to both of them during today's show. Be sure to head over to the Convocation Center Friday night. That's at 7 o'clock. You can see the wrestling team in action for the first time. And on Saturday afternoon, I'll be on the sidelines with Andy Garcia and Mark Lindo on the call at 2 o'clock pregame show, 2.30 Kickoff 94.9 WDKB. That's our radio station. You can tune in to NIU versus Ball State. You can also find the video of the game on ESPN+. It's going to do it for NIU Weekly. Thanks, as always, for joining us. Back with more next week.
NIU Weekly is over for today. Terry Bonadonna signing off. As always, go Huskies. Thank <laughs> you.